basal plus insulin therapy. So we'll discuss these things today, right? We'll discuss what is basal plus insulin therapy. We'll discuss when do you prescribe basal plus insulin therapy. We'll discuss which meal to select when you are selecting a basal plus and what dose of insulin to give, right? So these are all the topics we're going to discuss in the first part. So let's take a case here. So this is a case of a 50 year old male patient who is having diabetes since the last 10 years. And there is no past history of cardiovascular disease. The uh, parameters you can see, the patient's HP1C is 8.9%. The patient was already started on basal insulin and the patient's fasting blood sugar is 138. The post meal sugar is 240. So HP1C is still high, right? And the patient is already on treatment. So he's on metformin, one gram. He's on Sita plus Depa combination of 100 by 10. And he's on a basal insulin glargin, 42 units. Right? So these are the therapy of this patient. He seems to be uh, increasingly, uh, you know, having a lot of insulin resistance. As you can see, his uh, total insulin dose right now is 42 units, despite the patient being on multiple therapy. So what is the next course of action for such a patient? So that is what we are going to discuss in the next uh, few minutes. Okay, so let's understand what you typically do in a patient who uh, comes to you with diabetes. So naturally, as the and we are discussing mainly type 2 diabetes, remember, we are not discussing type 1, we are not discussing the other forms of diabetes, other forms of diabetes, there are other treatments, uh, what we are mainly focused today is on type 2 diabetes. Now, this is the uh, Korean uh, position statement on uh, use of insulin and use of uh, anti hyperglycemic therapy. So what they say is that when a patient comes to you, the patient is newly diagnosed, symptomatic and HP1C is more than 9% then you can directly start the patient on basal insulin with oral antidiabetics. And then once the basal insulin, you are able to achieve the fasting sugar in the target range. If the HbA1c is still high, then you can do intensification. And this intensification, you have three options. Either you switch the patient to a premix insulin, or you add a GLP-1 receptor agonist, or you add a prandial insulin, which is the basal plus therapy. Again, if you see a patient already on oral antidiabetic drugs, and the patient's blood sugar is still high, about the target, then you start the patient on basal insulin, you do the fixed fasting first, and then if the patient continues to have, uh, you know, high HbA1c, then you need to go for either basal plus therapy or GLPRA or premix insulin once or twice a day. And then further on, further intensification from basal plus, you can go on to basal bolus. And from premix insulin, you can go from one to two to two to three premix insulin. So this is the, it's, it's a very, uh, I think a very nice approach, which uh, the Korean guidelines have suggested as far as the uh, use of insulin is concerned. So what you need to understand is that what is the contribution of the fasting sugar and the post meal sugar to the HbA1c? This is a very important concept for everybody to understand. Now, the basic concept is that when the HbA1c is lower, the, in, uh, the uh, contribution of the post meal sugar is higher to the overall HbA1c. Whereas as the you know, HbA1c keeps progressing, the contribution of the fasting blood sugar is higher to the overall HbA1c. So that's why, let's say a patient comes to you with, with HbA1c more than 10%, then the first insulin that we start is basal insulin because the major contribution of the HbA1c is by the fasting blood glucose. So that's why we always start the patient on basal insulin. So overall, when you start the patient on basal insulin, you are able to achieve the target uh, fasting blood, once you achieve the target fasting blood sugar, in most cases, you are able to achieve the target HP1C. But remember, there is still a contribution of about 20%, 20% contribution of a post meal sugar. So there will be still 20% situation, 20% of hyperglycemia still remaining, right? So it requires a little bit of more, uh, you know, uh, slight push to bring the patient down, HP1C down to the target, right? So let me again reiterate this point, right? So let's say you have a patient with HP1C of 10%, right? So the fasting blood sugar, let's say, is 200. The post meal sugar is, let's say, 280. Okay, so this is the patient. Now, what do you do? You start the patient on basal insulin, right? So let's say you start the patient on a, a glargine, right? So typically we start, if you remember my previous lectures, it is FBS minus 50 divided by 10. So let's say the patient's fasting blood sugar is 200 minus 50 divided by 10. So it is going to come to 15 units, right? So 15 units is a typical, let's say round it up to a, you know, two digit number, you can say 14 or 16 units. So you start the patient on a 15 or 16 units of uh, basal insulin. And what you do is you fix fasting first, FFF, right? So if you fix the fasting first, so that is you increase the dose of basal insulin to achieve a fasting blood glucose of 90 
to 130. This is the typical range that I target up to 140 sometimes, right? So 90 to 140 is a target which I typically, it's a quite comfortable target to achieve, right? So we keep increasing the basal insulin to achieve this. Now, after that, you get the HP1C done, right? So after, after achieving the fixed fasting first, you get the HP1C done. Now, if the patient's HP1C is less than 7%, great, your job is done. You fix the fasting and the patient's blood sugar is fine. But if the HP1C is still high, then you need to add something. Then the contribution is that 20% that we saw earlier, and that is mainly the post meal sugar, right? So the main problem now is post meal sugar, and this post meal sugar then needs to be tackled. So how do you tackle post meal sugar, right? So there are different approaches where you can target, right? First of all, is obviously diet, right? Remember, it's post meal sugar, so again, patient can improve the diet, and then that can help. You can add certain drugs. Right, so medications, oral medications, like for example, AGIs like Acarbos, right, which you can typically use. You can use DPP-4 inhibitors, or you can use something like a short-acting uh, secretagogues, like for example, ripaglinide or netiglinide, or you can use something like a, uh, you know, a, a glyclazide, something like that. So short-acting, uh, you know, sulfonylureas also can be added. The next option then would be injectables. Right, and in injectables you have either you can use GLP-1 RA or you can consider adding the patient on a short acting insulin which is the bolus insulin. So these are the options where what you need to do if the patient's uh, HP1C remains high after fixed fasting first. Right? So hence the contribution of post meal sugar, so this is the same thing which is shown here that you intensify then you uh, PPG is still high and remember PPG is also independent cardiovascular disease marker right, so that is something which is important. So you need to achieve good glycemic control in these patients, right? So again, same thing here, right? Basal, basal plus, and then if still not under control, then basal bolus insulin. So this is the stepwise approach, stepwise approach to patient on, uh, you know, uh, with uh, beta cell deterioration and patients uh, with type two diabetes on insulin. Okay. So when should you consider a basal intensification or basal plus therapy? Now there are, uh, you know, both ADA and AAC guidelines have some recommendations on this. But what I'll say is I'll keep this things simple, right? Simple recommendation. If the patient's basal requirements, so two situations where you consider basal plus therapy. So if the patient's basal requirement is more than 0.5 unit per kg per day and the glucose is still not controlled, then you consider basal plus. And secondly, when the HP1C is above the target range, despite fixed fasting first, in that situation again, you need to consider basal plus insulin therapy. So let's go back to the first case again, right? So if you see the case again, uh, you can clearly see that patient has both the situations fulfilled, right? So if you see the patient's basal insulin requirement is 42 units and if you see the patient's weight is 80 kg, so you divide, uh, you know, it's about, it's more than 0.5 units per kg, right? 0.5 will be 40, so this is 42 units. So the patient is having more than 0.5 unit per kg uh, requirement of basal insulin, right? And secondly, despite correcting the fasting sugar, so fasting sugar we targeted to 90 to 140, Right, it's still it's it's reasonably under target, and despite that, the patient's HP1C is still high. That means that there's a lot of contribution of post meal sugar in this patient, and hence that this patient you should consider adding a basal plus therapy. Right, so that is where the basal intensification really comes into picture. Right, so again, same thing displayed here. Right, so that target HP1C is still not achieved with more than 0.5 unit per kg day of basal insulin, and despite correcting the fasting sugar, the HP1C goal is not achieved. And thirdly, when the postprandial sugar anyways are high, in those three conditions, you consider adding a basal plus insulin therapy. Okay, so this is how you typically do. I think same thing is now uh, thing here. Now, next question comes. So you said that we have decided the patient to start to start the patient on basal plus insulin, but which meal should you give basal plus insulin therapy? Right. So that's a very important and interesting question. Now, here also there are two approaches of of uh, doing this. Right. Uh, two simple approaches. Right? Uh, I'll explain both of them in detail. One approach is that you select the heaviest meal of the day. Right? And second approach is that you select the breakfast. Right? Okay. I'll in fact give you a third approach also. You can select the dinner, pre-dinner. In which situation would you se select what? That is what we'll discuss. Okay? Now, you can select the heaviest meal of the day. Uh, uh, sometimes a lot of patients have one particular meal which is very heavy. And patient knows about it, right? That I generally have a very heavy lunch, but my other meals are not that heavy. So mainly the contribution will be post meal, post lunch, which will be the major contribution. So in that case, you select the heaviest meal of the day. Again, in which situation would you choose a pre-dinner? This is a very important concept. Let me let me introduce this concept to you. If we saw that there are certain patients where the basal insulin requirement is more than 
point five unit per kg per day, right? So in this patients, remember, it's very important to understand this concept that the bedtime sugar, right? Remember the patients. So let's take a CGM of a patient, for example. Let's say the patient is getting up with a fasting sugar of let's say uh, one forty. Post breakfast it is going little high. Post lunch is going high. Post dinner it is going very high, right? So so what happens typically is that once the post dinner sugar goes high. Uh, a lot of the times it gradually deteriorates till the morning time but most of the time it remains a little bit high right so what we keep doing is we keep increasing the basal dose to correct the fasting but the problem is post dinner sugar which is high right so sometimes in such cases the post dinner is a problem so especially those patients where the basal insulin requirement is very high more than 0.5 unit per kg what i'll suggest is target a pre dinner short acting insulin and in other cases where neither of these things are true then you can consider adding the insulin before breakfast and this is where you have what is known as a domino effect i'm going to show you uh, a video which we had recorded with senofi uh, in the end it will give you a summary of the entire discussion what we are having but this will also demonstrate the domino effect so what is basically the domino effect that is what we are going to understand so by domino effect what it means so you know the dominoes right so dominoes typically fall so one of them fall all of them fall so same way what happens is that lot of patients what typically happens is that post breakfast the sugar is high because they have a lot of insulin resistance right and because of that the rest of the day the sugar remains consistently high right and then again you know that creates a problem right so that also contributes heavy to the uh, you know overall hp1c so what you do is you just knock down the post breakfast uh, high right so the post breakfast high if you can just knock that down then the entire day's blood sugar remains better right so in the video i'm going to show you some real life cgm case where we had shown this type of uh thing happening right so this is a concept of domino effect that if you basically start with the first meal of the day you add a basal plus before the first meal and that creates a domino and that domino chain and that kind of leads to fall of overall good glycemic control throughout the day then comes the question what dose to give and how to titrate it right so this is again a fundamental question uh so some of you would have seen my uh, earlier uh, you know videos and earlier uh, talks on this uh it's a very simple formula to use right the simple formula is post meal sugar divided by 36 it's a simple equation which i can give you so let's say the patient's post meal sugar is 360 then you will give 30 uh, 360 divided by 36 will be 10 units so we'll start with the 10 units of uh, bolus insulin before the meal right so uh, that is a very simple thing right how to titrate well you need to check the fasting and post meal glucose so here just don't check the post meal you need to check the fasting and post meal because sometimes what happens is because of the domino effect the fasting sugar also starts falling once the post meal starts falling so you need to check the fasting and that particular meal fasting try to target between 90 to 140 and post meal try to target less than 200 right so let's say you started with 10 units so let's say your patient the same patient which we discussed uh, earlier right so the same patient we started so it was patient had 42 units of basal insulin this post meal sugar was 240 right so 240 divided by 36 will be somewhere around 5 6 units right so let's say we started on 5 units of bolus uh, let's say we selected lunch time right so we selected so our treatment now is 42 units of uh glargine and 5 units of let's say glulysin before lunch right now what i do is i check the ask the patient to check the fasting and 2 hours after lunch sugar right so after let's say a couple of days the patient's fasting sugar is now 120 and post lunch is let's say 220 right so we started with 5 units now the post lunch is still high our target is less than 200 so you increase that let's say by 2 to 4 units certainly let's say let's increase by 2 units let's make it 7 units now the fasting sugar is let's say 90 and post meal sugar is still let's say 200 right still little high so let's increase a little to 8 units for example right and now the fasting comes to 80 and the post meal sugar is 180 right now fasting is now starting to come down so you can then reduce the uh, lantus dose or the glargine dose from 42 to let's say 38 units right so that's how you typically target so typically you know and in the end uh, my patient uh, this particular patient it, it's a real life case so the basal dose then came down to 36 units somewhere and the bolus was around 10 units right so this is what typically you settle down into and that that is that related to a comfortable level and the hp1c came down to uh, 7.1 in the next few months right so to summarize the first part of my presentation uh, basal plus insulin therapy is basically added when you add a bolus insulin to the basal insulin to intensify the treatment regime 
right? Uh, when do you consider, right? Remember, post meal sugar continues to contribute to high HPA1C even when the fasting is fixed, right? So about 20% uh, deficit is because of the uh, the post meal sugar. So you start the patient on basal plus when the basal requirement is more than 0.5 unit per kg day, kg per day, or the HPA1C is still high despite the fixed fasting first. Start with the largest meal of the day or the breakfast to take advantage of the domino effect. Or you can, if the patient's, uh, you know, basal dose requirement is high, you can start pre-dinner also. Typically start the patient on uh, post-meal sugar divided by 36 or another formula is 10% of the current basal dose. That's another formula to use, uh, rounded to the nearest whole number. And, and then gradually titrate the patient to achieve the fasting between 90 to 140 and post-meal more uh, less than 200. 